What's up, Bigger Pockets? Welcome to another House Hackers episode. Today, we have a three for one special in today's episode. We're at a great house today with three units. Two of them are being Airbnb with over $7,500 a month in gross revenue. Let's go check out this cash cow. All right, so we're walking up the side of the house. This top floor is their main house. And then through this side entrance, we're gonna go through and look at the basement Airbnb unit. So let's go find our guest, Jordan. Welcome to my three for one house hack. Where are we? Yeah, so Chris, you came in the side entrance to this house and basically this splits off into where we live, where my wife and I live, and then downstairs into our first Airbnb. Let's check out the basement. So the first thing I noticed walking down here, Jordan, is the lights are on, it's bright, you got music on. Like one of the things you told us before coming to this property is you very much focus on that guest experience when they walk in the property. Tell us why you do that. Well, I, Chris, I think it's just because uh, Airbnbs and what you're providing to people is hospitality. And in the hospitality industry, people want to come into a welcoming environment and they want to just they want it to feel comfortable. And so we give them the chance to come into an area that's well lit, that has snacks for them just getting off the road so that they can, you know, immediately relax and uh, start enjoying their stay. Yeah, and I noticed like you got the, the kitchenette down here. Here are the snacks you're talking about. People can grab it. I've definitely traveled and uh, appreciate potato chips once in a while. Now tell us about what you do with this basement because I know it did not look like this when you bought the property. That's right, it didn't. Um, so this was just one giant open room um, and then we had a bedroom over there. So we knew we needed a bathroom down here if we were gonna Airbnb it. So we put up this wall here, um, added a kitchenette um, to this area, a bathroom behind this wall, um, and then just kind of redid everything to make it more um, Airbnb proof, I would say. So we put down laminate flooring, we put in sturdy countertops, um, and then we just kind of upgraded the space. We um, made it just look very uh, aesthetically appealing. So a great pro tip from Jordan was not to use a printed guidebook. Rather, he places QR codes all over the house that you just scan it, we all know what QR code is, and it goes to an online manual. Tell us about why you went from paper to QR codes, Jordan? Uh, one of the main reasons was we were just constantly making updates to the actual guidebook. And so instead of having to constantly print off uh, a new guidebook, it gave us an opportunity to just update it online. And then the QR code will always remain the same. So guests are always getting the latest and uh, updated information. Um, and then it also just cuts down on um, guest questions. So the digital guidebooks are much more interactive. They provide a lot more information than you can even just provide um, in a paper format. So, you know, a map as to where the guest is, where the local restaurants, breweries, coffee shops are, um, hiking trails, anything like that is all in the digital guidebook. And uh, it's just a very easy, concise way for guests to know exactly what to do yep. um, while they're staying here and then what to do outside of, uh, you know, around the area. Tell us about what you did in the bathroom here and all the materials that you provide your guests. Yeah, absolutely. So we always want our guests to have more than enough of what they need. So we always provide more than enough towels, plenty of hand towels, and then we provide a steamer um, and then extra toilet paper rolls. Um, we also provide um, feminine hygiene products um, in case um, that is needed. And then um, last but not least, we provide all the soap, conditioner, and shampoo that a guest would need. So question for you. I've heard very mixed things from Airbnb hosts. Some talk about how much stuff is stolen and some say they don't have a problem. In your case, I mean, a bunch of hand towels here. Do they go disappearing? Uh, no, I don't think so. Guests definitely use their fair share of uh, hand towels and extra towels that are out. Um, but it's not a big deal because my our cleaners were already doing a, a load anyways. And then we reduced that on the soap, soap side by doing a soap dispenser. And so, I mean, I guess would have to bring a bottle in and actually start pumping soap out if they really wanted to steal anything. Uh, pretty unlikely that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Now, Jordan has three main pieces of software that he uses to optimize his time 
his guest experience, and to maximize revenue. What are those, Jordan? Uh, yeah, so the first one we use is a dynamic pricing. And so rather than us having to know what the demand is not uh, on a certain weekend or a certain time of year, we rely on that dynamic software to then change the pricing within Airbnb so that we can maximize the revenue as much as possible. So two questions there. How much time does that save you per week and how much revenue boost does that give you, do you think? Um, I would say I, I would probably spend a couple hours on pricing each week, just trying to compare different Airbnb prices and the demand in the area. So I would say it saves me a couple hours. And then as far as uh, revenue, I mean, I would estimate I'm probably getting hopefully, you know, 15 to 20% more revenue just off of that because, you know, weekends are priced far higher, especially when the demand is higher. So able to bring in a, a greater nightly rate. And what's uh, that softer cost? Uh, it's only about maybe 10 to 15 bucks a listing. So more than worth its weight in gold. So 15 bucks a month to say five, eight hours a month in timing and boost revenue by 10 to 20%. I mean, that's a no brainer. Yeah, absolutely. What's your second software? Um, so we use a turnover software that um, our cleaners are then um, kind of attached to. And so then they can see when a turnover is, they can see the name of the guest um, and uh, they can then assign a specific cleaner to that clean. So we have multiple cleaners that help clean the, the two different units. And so that way we ensure that everyone, uh, that every unit always has uh, someone assigned to a, an actual turnover. And so the unit is ready for the next guest. And then we also use that same software for messaging. So um, the automated messaging that goes out to guests, um, that's all through that software. It then um, inputs it into Airbnb and that gets sent out so that we don't ever have to answer um, questions or send information out to guests before okay. they arrive. Third piece of software, what is it? Uh, the last one we have is just the guidebooks that we touched on before. And so uh, just the digital guidebook, we pay a certain amount each month for a subscription to you know, be able to create those QR codes and um, send people information. Awesome. Well, great uh, tips on there. And definitely everyone should spend time looking at technology like Jordan was talking about. You just saw numerous ways where it saved him time and headache which is money and also increase revenue. So utilize technology and be smart. All right, we're in the second unit on Jordan's property here, and this is the ADU or accessory dwelling unit. Now, when Jordan bought the property, this was an old garage, and I think your friend said it might fall over soon. Obviously, it not only did not fall over, but you did an amazing conversion with this property. Tell us about what it took, because it's something a lot of people want to do, but very few people actually execute on it. Yeah, it was, it was quite a bit of work, um, you know, in complete transparency. We had a GC that came in and helped us out with a lot of it. Um, but essentially what it involved was a lot of trenching because all existing utilities are in the main house. And so we had to connect to that existing main line for sewer, water, electricity, um, and then bring that all into here so that we could add a bathroom, so that we could add um, you know, a separate breaker panel. Um, so we got to add HVAC. And so it was a lot of uh, time, energy, and working with the city to really make it what it is right now. Um, but what we did see uh, in the property right from the beginning was the potential to turn this into another unit. And so it may have looked like it was a little bit um, unsteady or like it might've tipped over, but in all honesty, um, it was was framed well and so we, we reinforced the framing of it, uh, we reinforced the roof and then just built it out from there and uh, you know I think it looks great now. And the way you said oh with all transparency I used a GC, I think that's a great thing and that more people should consider doing hiring a GC versus DIYing. How long did it take you and how much did it cost to convert this property or convert this uh, garage? Yeah so it took us about six to eight months to convert the garage. Um, and it took us about 65,000. So initially the bid from our GC was about 55,000 um, with uh, added costs from city requirements. It ended up coming up about another 10,000 um, to include all the landscaping that we had to do. Um, but uh, overall we were probably all in about 65,000. And what's the uh, like average nightly rent on here? Um, I would say it's pretty close to 180 a night. All right, so would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. So let's talk about how Jordan found this property because looking at it right now, man, it is a gem. But when he found it, it was not a gem and a lot of people overlooked the potential of this property. So walk us through the process and your filtering mechanism. Yeah, so we didn't know we wanted to do a garage conversion in the first place. We were actually just looking for 
basically a two to three unit. And uh, through that uh, through that search and just the competitive market, we found we needed to turn to a more creative solution um, when looking for a property. And uh, we had heard about a guy in the Springs who was converting a garage and we thought, well, maybe we could do that. Um, and so I would just filter each day through properties that were zoned correctly for two units. And then I would also look to see how large the detached garage was. And so I found this property, the garage, wasn't huge. Um, in total, it's about 340 square feet, which is on the smaller side. Um, but I saw the potential and it was at a great price. And um, so we we came out and took a look and decided that we would give it a try. And it made sense for you then. It did. So pro tip here is that you heard how he went into a daily routine of searching for properties. That's necessity number one. Necessity number two is he set up filtering mechanisms so you see the types of properties that he wanted to. Now keep this in mind too, the data that he's seeing and filtering is only as good as the data put in there. Now, would you always say listing agents always put in the most accurate data in listings? Oh, no. Absolutely not. They just, they don't. Um, and so don't just always rely on the filter me mechanisms, definitely do it. But we have uncovered lots of great properties where the agent did not put in the right information or mistyped it in, lost for them, win for us. So definitely filter it out and keep that in mind. All right, so we're sitting outside at the ADU's private space out here. ADU's behind us, fireplace is here, main house is up front. Now, one of the pro tips you shared with us before recording was that having a great outdoor space was key for getting people to book, but they don't necessarily use it. Tell us more about that. Um, yeah, so people come to Colorado, beautiful Colorado. They're usually coming in the summertime. And so all they wanna do when they come to Colorado or all they think they wanna do is sit around a fire, enjoy the, the great outdoors, enjoy nature. From what we see, people don't really use the outdoor space all that much, but it kills in the photos. And so it draws people in and people say, I can see myself. Uh, they can visually see themselves, you know, sitting outside, glass of wine, beer, around the fire. And so we wanted to make sure that was a key point or a key selling point for us in our Airbnbs. Makes sense. I mean, I think I'm the same way at home. We've put a lot of time and work into making our outdoor spaces and we've used them like three times this year so yep. far. So I can relate, but makes complete sense. So great pro tip there. Make sure you have outdoor spaces. While guests don't always use them, they show great in photos, which helps eyeballs on your property and then more bookings. So make sure you address your outdoor space and then take some great photos. So now we're seeing the third unit on the property here. This is the main floor where Jordan and his wife live. Now, Jordan's done a great job of walking through the property and going through pro tips, but I want to spend a few minutes and talk about your strategy because you're very specific on what you and your wife's goals are. Can you share that with the camera? Yeah, so since my wife and I started dating, um, I knew it was a big thing that she wanted to stay at home with the kids in the future. Um, right now, she's a, a nurse on a mother baby unit and she loves her job, she loves what she does. Um, but she's always felt a draw to be a stay at home mom. And so, you know, knowing that and moving into marriage, we thought, okay, what is one way that we can begin to supplement her income? And one clear way um, after doing lots and lots of research was getting into real estate. And so uh, we moved from our, our large single family home and into a small little portion of a duplex and started house hacking. And uh, it quickly began to change our life. And that's how we got where we are now. What were other ways you looked at to achieve that income? And what, why did you decide on real estate? So I guess some of the main ways were uh, just further investing. So you could do like dividend stock investing. Um, you could always work more. You could pick up a second job. But all of those were taking away from uh, taking time away. And with real estate, you're able to leverage so much. And so being able to leverage such a, a large amount among all the other benefits, cash flow, tax advantages, principal pay down, and then just general appreciation of a property, it was kind of a no brainer after you look at real estate and you think, okay, this is a true wealth generator and, and something that you can get true cash flow from. Great. Jordan, thank you. And thanks to your wife for allowing us to come to your house. So we're very appreciative of it. We're gonna go back to the studio now, go into some more numbers about Jordan's property and wrap up the show. Jordan, we'll see you soon. Sounds good. So we're back in the studio, which means we're gonna be talking house hack stacks. Now, Jordan has built a very impressive portfolio, a very impressive house hack stack since he started in 2018. Now he has five properties and he's under contract on his sixth property at the time of this recording. Now stop on that sink in because he's moved fast. He's moved quick. And we're not going to go into numbers today. Right, I want to focus on the two M's, mindset 
and momentum. To go out there and have success, you have to change your mindset. I have not met any investors or entrepreneurs who have not changed and upgraded their mindset. Now, the other part of here is I call it creating momentum. Jordan has aggressive goals, and he also has a timeline for when he and his wife want to start their family. He's like, hey, I got to get to here. I have a sense of urgency. And he's out there working fast, working hard, creating momentum. And momentum is such a powerful effect. If you've never experienced before, oh, just strive for it in your life. I've had it a handful of times in business, investing, and sports in high school. And it has changed my life. In those couple years, you have momentum. You can get more done in those couple years than you would in 20 years without it. So make sure you're looking at your mindset and also focusing on building momentum. As we wrap up, if you resonated with Jordan's story, make sure you connect with him. His social links are down below in the show notes. And of course, if you want more behind the scenes content, more tips on house hacking, make sure you check out my YouTube channel as well. We got behind the scenes content for this property and other properties as well. And last but not least, hit the like button, leave some comments, and we'll chat with you below. Guest in your property, but really doesn't have any impact on the outside. I'm a weird way of yeah. freezing it. Your first one was better. His future, his wife's future, and his future family's future as well. How about that? Lost futures. Yeah, well. Lost futures. We're changing things here. We're gonna be Oprah next. 80 for you. 80 for you.